Hello everyone, and welcome to Fictional Vortex, so we are back with an interesting series on what if Naruto had the power of Shinobi of the Four Nations. But before we start, I just want to remind you to please subscribe to my channel and hit the like button if you enjoy my content. Let's start the story. It was a dark and gloomy day for the village Konoha, but not as dark as it was for one seven-year-old Naruto Uzumaki who was standing outside the gates to the village with a backpack. Nearly three hours ago Naruto had been found unconscious in the Uchiha compound by the Anbu members who were cleaning up the Uchiha massacre. Despite the lack of evidence that Naruto had done anything, the civilian council had banished Naruto on the suspicion of stealing the Sharingan, since every member of the clan had their eyes removed. After the council had banished him, the Hokage, feeling guilty, had given Naruto all of the scrolls that had been recovered from Uzushiogakure, since they were technically his as the last member of the Uzumaki clan before telling him of his status as Jinchuriki, as well as telling him about his mom Kashina. With the knowledge of his mom and his near-extinct clan, Naruto headed towards the gate where he was met by a few of the shinobi that had helped him as he was growing up. The first was Dog, one of his Anbu guards, who had given him a scroll with his most prized jutsu, the Chidori. After that was Kat, an Anbu member that he had gained a small crush on, she had given him a pair of katanas and a scroll on Kenjutsu. The third and final Anbu member was Tiger who had given him a custom-made Anbu uniform with a fox mask. Once his Anbu guards had given him their farewell gifts, a few of the Jonin that like him gave him a gift as well, the first was Anko, who had allowed him to sign the snake summoning contract, followed by Kurinai who gave him a book on creating his own jutsu. After Kurinai was Genma, who gave him some Senbon needles and a book on human anatomy which Hunter Nin used to learn the vital spots. The last two surprise him a little, as both Hana and Sume gave him gifts. Hana gave him some chakra paper to test his affinity, showing he had fire, water and air, before she gave him a book on elemental chakra control. After Hana, Sume stepped forward and, with a small ancient ritual, made him an honorary member of the Inazuka clan before giving him a scroll containing copies of their clan scrolls. I swear I will make Konoha pay for what it did to me, and nothing is going to stop me. Naruto said standing on a small hill overlooking the village, his eyes unconsciously activating a pair of Sharingan that had been implanted into him. With one last disgusted look at the village that had hated and shunned him for something out of his control, Naruto turned and began walking away with one goal in mind, to become stronger. Time skip. One year an eight-year-old boy with blonde hair stood on the deck of a rather large ship, his eyes closed as he calmly breathed in and out, Suddenly without any warning the boy struck sending out a jet of blue flames followed up with a few kicks which sent out more flames, before preforming an overhead kick causing water to shoot over the ship in an arc before a number of jets shot out towards empty buckets placed on the ship, filling them with water and fish. Very good Naruto, that was very good, the boy, one Naruto Uzumaki, turned to the man who spoke with a small smile. The man was Pai Sho, the captain of the ship, and a master firebender. After leaving Konoha, Naruto traveled around the elemental nations, after learning and mastering tree walking and water walking thanks to an Uzumaki technique, the shadow clone jutsu, Naruto water walked to Kiri, where he helped end the civil war by ripping Sanbi out of Yagura and sealing it inside himself. With the Sanbi inside him Naruto was hailed as a hero and was given access to a number of Kiri's secret water jutsu, as well as being made an honorary member of Kiri. After a few months in Kiri, Naruto was walking around a small port town where he saved Pai Sho from a group of bandits and a missing nin from Iwa. Pai Sho, after learning about Naruto's problem of being banished from his home, offered to take him to the bending countries, which Naruto agreed to. Three months into the journey to the bending counties Naruto observed Pai Sho practicing his fire bending while another crew member, Ko, practiced water bending. When he asked to learn bending from them he was disappointed because the said it was imposable for people from the elemental nations to learn bending just like it was imposable for people from the bending countries to learn jutsu. Imagine their surprise when Naruto, having used his Sharingan, which he learned about in Kiri, to copy their movements began bending the water around them before fire bending. After a week of trying to figure out how Naruto finally figured out that because of his status as a Jinchuriki, he was able to use jutsu and bend something that no one had ever heard of before. With the discovery that Naruto could bend, both Pai Sho and Ko began teaching him everything they knew about the art of bending. Thanks Pai Sho, I've been working hard to learn to do that, Naruto smirked, and it was true, he had been working hard to master both water and fire bending. 
Yes well, we're about to dock at a port in the Fire Nation, Naruto nodded his head, he had been waiting to reach the Fire Nation for some time now. Alright, thanks for the heads up, nodding Pai Shou left as Naruto turned to stare at the rapidly approaching Fire Nation. Naruto had learned all about this hundred year war that was started by the Fire Nation, and he could see the point that Sozin had about all four nations living together under one rule, he hated the fact that everyone relied on this avatar to solve their problems. Soon, once I get to the Fire Nation, I can work my way up to the top and end this pointless war, then use those resources to destroy Konoha for what they did to me, he thought feeling the Kiyubi and Sanbi both stir inside his seal. During his time in Kiri, Naruto had found out Yugura's secret to controlling the Biju was to conquer the darkness inside yourself then beat them in combat and take their chakra. So during his final week in Kiri, Naruto beat his darkness by accepting it before taking Sanbi's chakra using his Sharingan to hypnotize it. So, how do you plan to take control of the Fire Nation? Kiyubi asked from inside the seal. I don't yet, but I'll think of a way, and if I can't I'll just wing it and let my devil's luck take care of the rest. Both Biju chuckled at that seeing as his, devil's luck, as he called it allowed him to do things that were normally imposable for other humans to do. A few hours later Naruto was sitting in front of Prince Ozai whom he had saved from an earthbender who was trying to assassinate him. So let me get this straight, you are a shinobi from the elemental nations that can both firebend and waterbend. You traveled here on a ship hoping to gain some form of power in order to destroy the village that banished you for no reason whatsoever. Ozai said looking down at Naruto with a curious glint in his eye, someone who could bend two different elements and wasn't the avatar was a golden resource that he would be foolish to ignore. Yes sir, Naruto said bowing his head a little, after saving Ozai Naruto had been brought to the Fire Lord's palace for questioning, with Ozai being the one to question him. Naruto, while normally I would never do anything like this, how would you like to become the next heir to the throne? Naruto's head snapped up and he looked at Ozai like he was crazy. My son is a failure, and while I know my daughter Azula would be an excellent Fire Lord, she would need someone as stronger to help her run things around here. That's where you come in, you will be trained here in the palace by the best teachers in the Fire Nation, both bending teachers and political teachers, you will be taught the art of war and how to rule with an iron fist, and when you and Azula are old enough you two shall be married, making you the next heir to the throne. Naruto's eyes widened while Azula, Ursa and Zuko, who were in the room as well all displayed different emotions. Ursa, Ozai's wife, was shocked at her husband's words, while Zuko was hurt. Azula on the other hand had a wide grin on her face, she, like her father, could see the benefits of having Naruto in the family, and with him at her side they would become the most powerful couple in history. I would be honored to accept your offer Prince Ozai, Naruto said bowing with a small smirk on his face. Things were coming along faster than he thought they would. Time skip. Seven years Naruto stood on a hill overlooking a small village in the Earth Kingdom. While the village wasn't very big, it did house a number of Earth Kingdom soldiers, who were making it rather difficult for the forces he was currently commanding to move forward to the Pohuai stronghold. What are your orders, Lord Naruto? asked one of the higher ranked soldiers, who was standing behind Naruto. Simple, have all of your men watch from here. I'll deal with this myself, without another word Naruto hopped of the hill and headed towards the village. It had been seven years since Naruto had accepted Ozai's offer and he couldn't be happier. In those seven years Naruto had become one of if not the strongest bender in the entire Fire Nation, with the only people rivaling him being Ozai and Azula. Four years after his arrival, Ozai was named the Fire Lord after Azulon died in his sleep. Two years later Naruto fought Zuko in an Agni Kai, for interrupting a war meeting and gave him a scar on his face before he was banished. Over the past seven years Naruto and Azula had grown closer than Ozai had expected. Both were powerful firebenders and had keen minds, the two working together were unbeatable, something that both pleased and frightened Ozai. A year after Zuko was banished Naruto was sent to the front lines to help lead the Fire Nation army, during which time he gained a number of titles, but none were more feared then. The Raging Demon of the Burning Sea a title which he though suited him. Halt! Who goes there? yelled an earthbender as Naruto calmly approached the village, the hood of the cloak he was wearing shadowing his eyes. Your death, the earthbender eyes widened before a sword was plunged through his throat, killing him, removing his blade from the man's neck, Naruto hopped onto the wall surrounding the village. Attention Earth Kingdom soldiers, I am giving you all one warning, surrender now, 
or I will whip this village and everyone in it of the map. Naruto yelled getting the attention of all of the earth soldiers in the village, seeing as all of the civilians had been evacuated weeks beforehand. We'll never surrender to you Fire Nation dogs, yelled an earthbender as he sent a boulder flying at Naruto who smirked. I was hoping you say that, as the boulder neared him and suddenly split in half, shocking everyone, causing Naruto to smirk before he vanished, reappearing in front of a number of soldiers all of whom fell to the ground, dead. So, who's next? Up on the hill hundreds of Fire Nation soldiers watched in awe as Naruto killed hundreds Earth Kingdom soldiers left and right with just his swords and speed. Incredible, no wonder Lord Naruto is next in betrothed to Princess Azula, to be able to cause this amount of destruction by himself is unimaginable, said a random soldier as the bloodbath ended and Naruto headed back towards them covered in blood. Captain, the town is cleared, you and your men should have no trouble reaching the Pohuai stronghold. Naruto said as he walked past the crowd of firebender soldiers, all of whom stared at him in shock. Thank you Lord Naruto, if I may ask, what are you going to do now sir? The captain asked walking behind Naruto. Smirking Naruto pulled out a letter that Ozai had sent him a few day ago, informing him that the avatar had returned. I'm going to be taking a, small vacation, Naruto said smirking leaving a confused captain, he had already written to Ozai and told him his plan. He was going to travel with the avatar and keep an eyes on him to assess his threat level if he thought he was a threat he would capture or kill him preferably capture if he wasn't a threat he wasn't going to do anything except take a nice relaxing vacation a few hours later as the moon hung in the air naruto wearing his anbu gear that he got from his anbu guard stood on a tree watching as three kids camped out with a giant sky bison lying next to them telling naruto that one of the three was the avatar the group was rather unimpressive the first kid was tall and lanky around 15 or 16 and he had to guess, he had dark brown hair and blue eyes. He was wearing a pair of blue pants, a blue sleeveless shirt and boots, telling Naruto he was from one of the water tribes. The second kid, whom Naruto assumed was the avatar, was also unimpressive. He was a bald kid with arrow tattoos on his head and hands. He was wearing orange monk robes and in Naruto's opinion was acting very childishly dispute his age which he would guess was around 11 or 12. The last member of the group was the one that really caught Naruto's attention, she was a girl of around 14 or 15, with long dark brown hair and blue eyes, making Naruto assume she was related to the first boy. She was wearing a pair of blue pants and a blue shirt, both of which hugged her body nicely in Naruto's opinion. Well this is interesting, judging from what I'm seeing right now. The two boys are idiots and the girl is as beautiful as Azula. Since I can sense smell water hanging around her I assume she's a waterbender. And my guess the exact opposite of Azula, damn that would be so hot to see the two of them in bed together, though I wonder how she would feel about sharing, I know Azula's not real keen on the idea unless it's a bender that can stand up to her in a fight, and I can tell with a little training this girl would be able to match Azula with no problem, Naruto smirked as he observed the girl before his eyes landed on the avatar. The avatar on the other hand is a simple kid, who possess no threat to my plans whatsoever, though it would be good to keep an eye on him. He narrowed his eyes at the sight of the boy staring at the girl with a stupid a love struck expression. Yelp! Definitely a good idea to keep an eye on the brat. With that thought, Naruto settled down in the tree preparing to sleep as well as come up with a plan to join the kids, and possibly get the girl to join him. As the sun rose over the horizon, Naruto once again stood atop a large tree as he watched the sleeping group. Who were even aware of their surroundings as they slept. This group isn't very attentive to their surroundings, Naruto thought as he looked around before for a way to join them for a while, before seeing smoke rising in the distance. Perfect, looks like I can save them from a Fire Nation team. With a small smirk, Naruto leapt from the team to make sure it was a Fire Nation squad. Once he had confirmed that it was, he headed towards the Avatar and his group. Hey kid, wake up. Naruto quietly shook the bald monk awake. What, what's going on? He asked blearily looking around in confusion. There are Fire Nation troops nearby, hurry wake up your friend, we need to go. Naruto moved over to Katara, and gently shook her. Hey wake up, you guys will be in danger if you stay here too long. Slowly opening her eyes, the girl in front of him blushed causing him to blink in confusion before he remembered that he removed his Anbu mask though he wore a mask that covered the lower half of his face like Kakashi. Who are you? She asked as her blush slowly died away. 
Sorry, there's no time for that right now, we need to move, there's a group of Fire Nation soldiers a little over a mile from here. The girl's eyes widened at that news before she flew into motion helping the monk pack their things. Come on Sokka wake up, we need to leave, the monk said as he tried to wake the last member of the group. Here, let me, I know a way to wake him up, Naruto opened up the cantina and gently bent some water out of it, getting wide eyes from the two. Once he had enough water Naruto molded it into a sphere before heating it up using fire bending, again shocking them. Once the water was heated up enough, Naruto bent then water over the sleeping boy before letting fall on him. I'm up, what's going on are we under attack? The boy asked shooting up and looking around before his eyes landed on Naruto. You're not under attack but we could be soon, a group of Fire Nation troops are nearby and we need to move, with that Naruto moved over and grabbed their stuff before tossing it onto the bison, before grabbing Sokka, who was still in his sleeping bag, before tossing him up as well. Come on, if we hurry we can get out to sea before they get here, he grabbed the girl bridal style, causing her to blush before jumping onto the back of the bison, the monk already on its head. Come on Appa, yip yip, with a loud roar, the bison slapped its tail on the ground before shooting into the air. Wow, now this is how you travel, Naruto smirked before turning to see the three of them staring at him with a small lemur on the monk's head. Um, yo, Naruto gave an eye smile to the three. Um, thank you for waking us back there, but could you tell us who you are? The girl asked looking at him. Yeah, why were you on that island, and how do we know there were really Fire Nation troops there anyway? Naruto gave him a deadpan look before pointing over his shoulder at the island, where a number of Fire Nation troops exited the trees. Oh, well that still doesn't explain who you were or why you were on that island, or how you could waterbend and firebend. Soka's eyes widened at the mention of him firebending. I guess introductions are in order uh, Naruto chuckled. Alright my name's Naruto Uzumaki. My name's Katara, this is my brother Sokka and Aang, Katara said motioning towards the two boys as she named them. It's nice to meet you all, he took Katara's hand and kissed the back of it, making her blush return. Alright enough with that, are you going to tell us why you were on that island and how you could bend two element or not? Sokka asked glaring at Naruto. Well I'd prefer the not. But I'm guessing that's not really an option, is it? The three shook their heads. Sai fine. Do any of you know about the elemental nations? Sokka and Katara shook their heads while Aang's eyes widened. You're from the elemental nations? Aang practically yelled in shock, getting confused looks from the other two while Naruto nodded. Sorry, but what are the elemental nations, and what do they have to do with why you were on that island? Katara asked confused. Sai the elemental nations is basically one big continent on the other side of the world, it's split up into multiple smaller land with the five biggest lands being known as the five great nations. My teacher and I are what you call noop nin, or runaways, it's a complicated matter, anyways, me and my teacher were trade ship that was traveling back here to the bending nations we were acting as guard in exchange for a ride. Sometime during the trip I saw two of the crew men training with their bending and copying their movements I learned to waterbend and firebend, the group was captivated by his story, which wasn't completely false since he did learn bending on a ship headed here towards the bending nations. Even though my teacher couldn't do it, they guessed that since my chakra natures are fire, wind, and water, that it made it easy for me to learn fire and waterbending. Wait what are chakra natures? Sokka asked confused. Well it's like you're bending. It's what we use to create the attacks that we use, though I'm not sure why but people from the bending countries can't use chakra and people from the elemental nations aren't supposed to be able to bend, though for some reason I can do both, Naruto shrugged, inwardly smirking. Anyways, after we left the ship my teacher decided I should continue to learn bending. As an ace in the hole, or a trick up my sleeve, which I agreed with, so we were headed toward the North Pole since I have a stronger connection with water than fire, but on our way there we were attacked and my teacher was killed, I don't remember much after that because I went on a little berserker rampage, but I decided to keep heading toward the north pole hoping to find a waterbending teacher, Naruto gained a fake sad smile at the mention of his fake sensei, I was resting on that island back there when I saw you free land on the beach, originally I was going to ignore you but I could sense the water around you too, so I decided I would confront you this morning about it, but when I woke up I smelt fire and since you three were still asleep I went to check it out, which is where I found the Fire Nation troops, I wasn't really worried but then I remembered you guys on the beach, so I woke you up and here we are. 
How do we know you're telling the truth and that you're not a Fire Nation spy? Naruto deadpanned at Sokka before pointing back at the island. If I was a spy I would have left you sleeping and told the firebenders where you were. Naruto chuckled as Katara popped Sokka on the head. He's right Sokka, you need to learn to stop being so paranoid, he did save us after all, Katara said sternly. So, what are you three doing out here like this, I doubt it's just sightseeing, Naruto asked with fake curiosity since he already had an idea. Oh, we're on our way to the North Pole too, Aang said with a megawatt smile which caused Naruto to chuckle, he seemed to be doing that a lot around these three. Oh, that's cool, you guys mind if I tag along with you, as they say there's safety in numbers, both Katara and Aang instantly agreed while Sokka hesitated a bit before Katara agreed for him. Great, so, since I'm guessing you guys are making a lot of stops along the way, where are we stopping next? We're going to ride the elephant koi, Aang said excitedly before snapping the reins to make Appa go faster. Elephant koi huh, sounds like fun, Aang seemed to beam at the idea of someone else agreeing with his idea. As the four continued to fly a sense of peace quickly fell over the group, each doing something different, Katara was concentrating on fixing Soka's pants since he had apparently ripped them. Sokka was lounging about as he waited for Katara to finish his pants, Aang was watching Katara with a love-struck expression, and Naruto pulled out an advanced book on animal care he had gotten from the Inazuka before he left Konoha, completely tuning out everything around him. What are you reading? Naruto paused in his book and glanced at Katara, who was leaning over his shoulder to look at the book, pressing her breast into his back. It's a book on animal care, I figure that since I'm now hanging with you three I might as well help take care of Appa and Momo. The little lemur hopped onto his head at being called. Even though the animals around here are a little different than the ones back in the elemental nations, the general idea in caring for them is basically the same, Naruto smirked before sealing the book back into the seal on his arm. How did you do that? Katara asked wide-eyed at seeing the book vanish into thin air. Chakra, the three blinked in confusion. It the energy that the people of the elemental nations use. Chakra is the combination of Kai or the physical energy in the body, and Ki, the spiritual energy. When combined they allow the user to preform Jutsu, which are placed into a number of categories. The one I just use is called Fuenjutsu or the sealing art. Wow that's so cool, can you teach us? Sokka asked excitedly getting a negative response. Sorry, but for some reason it's impossible for people from the bending countries to learn Jutsu just like it's impossible for people from the elemental nations to learn bending. But you're from the elemental nations and you can bend, Aang pointed out causing Naruto to give a small dark chuckle. Well you see, I'm a special case, one of nine in fact, Naruto said cryptically causing Aang's eyes to widen, apparently he knew what Naruto meant. You're a Jinchuriki, Aang said in shock and, if Naruto was hearing right, a little excitement. You know of us? The two water tribe members were looking between the two in confusion. All right, I'll bite. What's this Jinchura thingy? Sokka asked after a few minutes. Jinchuriki, it means power of a human sacrifice. Jinchuriki are people who have one of the nine biju, a creature able to rival the avatar, sealed inside them, Aang said, getting a wide eyes look from the two. You seem to know a lot about us. How is that? Naruto asked, his eyes narrowed in curiosity. Well you see, I was born over a hundred years ago, during one of my trips with my teacher Gyatso he took me to the elemental nations and I met a Jinchuriki, her name was Mito Uzumaki, she was really nice, she told me about Jinchuriki, she said that they were individuals who were given a lot of power and a lot of hate, but with love, that could overcome the hate and learn to control the power they were given, Naruto smirked, he had heard that as well. Well you're right, I am a Jinchuriki. I am Naruto Uzumaki the Jinchuriki of the Kyubi no Kitsune and Sanbi no Kyodai game, Aang eyes widened at that, he was the Jinchuriki for two, that seemed imposable. And Katara, if you want I can teach you Jutsu, Katara's eyes widened at that. How, I you said it's imposable unless you're a Jinchuriki, she said confused. You're right, it is imposable unless you're a Jinchuriki, but if you were listening I said I was the Jinchuriki for two biju, Katara's eyes widened at what he was getting at. If you want, I can transfer Sanbi and give him to you, then I could teach you some water jutsu. But why are you offering it to me? Why not Aang or Sokka? She asked a little nervously. Well, I'm not offering it to Aang because he's the avatar. Sanbi and the other nine biju can easily rival the avatar in power like Aang said, if I sealed Sanbi into him, 
their powers will clash inside his body and ultimately kill him from the inside out. The three paled at that thought before shaking their heads, they did not want that to happen. A similar result would happen to Sokka, which is why I didn't offer it to him. If I were to seal Sanbi into him, it would force his chakra pathways, which is how chakra and Kai for bending moves throughout the body, to open and expand at a rapt pace, which would kill him from chakra poisoning. Again, the three paled at the thought before rapidly shaking their heads. The reason it would work for you is because you're a waterbender, your chakra pathways are already opened, and at most you'd only be in pain for a few hours because of your pathways expanding enough to allow chakra to flow instead of just Kai, he said with a smile, hoping she would take the chance, since she seemed to be a bit hesitant, unlike Azula, who jumped at the chance to become a Jinchuriki. A week after Zuko was banished, Naruto requested a ship back to the elemental nations under the guise of stealing more scrolls to learn from to which Ozai agreed to and allowed, on the condition he take Azula, to which Naruto agreed. Once they reached the elemental nations, Naruto and Azula headed to the last no location of the Yanbi, where Naruto, after placing it under his control with the Sharingan, ripped it out of its host and sealed it within Azula, whom he trained in the shinobi arts on the way back. I don't think you should do it Katara, everyone turned to Sokka who was looking at Naruto suspiciously. I mean there's got to be a catch to it, I mean seriously why would someone give up something with the power to rival the avatar without wanting something in return it doesn't make any sense? Sokka's right it does seem a little weird, Aang said after a few minutes. Did you ever think it could just be a friendly offer, Katara said getting a confused look from the two. It is a friendly offer, seeing as I would still have the stronger of the two inside me, Naruto said getting a smug look from Katara. See, some people can offer things without wanting something in return she said with a smile. Yeah, but you should know, there's another reason you're the only person in this group I can give Sanbi to. Naruto looked away from them, a small tint of red in his cheeks. In order for me to transfer Sanbi to you, I first have to draw a seal on you then, we have to sleep together, he said the last part in a rush, making them blink in confusion. I'm sorry can you repeat that last part, I didn't quit catch it? Katara asked blinking. Sai I said that after I draw the containment seal onto you, the only way for me to transfer Sanbi to you is to sleep with you, all three blushed. The reason I'm offering this now, is so you have a little time to think about it, I know a little of waterbending culture from the teacher I had on my journey here, according to him. A female member of either water tribe must marry the first man they sleep with who is not blood related, since we've only known each other for a few hours. I'm offering it now so you have time to think about my offer while you get to know me before making a huge decision like this. I'll consider it, Katara said stuttering at the idea of sleeping with Naruto, before kissing his cheek. And thanks for considering my feelings on this. No problem, but for now, let's head find those elephant koi, getting an excited nod from Aang, the group bunkered down as they headed for their next destination, all the while each one thinking over everything they had learned about Naruto so far and wondering what they would learn about him in the days to come. Naruto let out a small sigh as he leaned against Appa, watching as Katara tend to a sick Sokka, while Aang tried to find some medicine. It had been around a month since Naruto had joined the Avatar and friends, and in his honest opinion things were going well. After joining the group they headed for Kyoshi Island, where Aang rod the elephant koi before a giant sea serpent ate them scaring Aang and knocking him out before they were captured by a group of girls known as the Kyoshi Warriors. Once their little adventure on Kyoshi was over they headed for Omashu, where Aang was given a test by King Bumi, who also talked to Naruto about his plan to destroy take over the bending nations. After leaving Omashu the group made a number of different stops, during one of their stops Aang managed to enter the spirit world, where he learned of a way to meet Roku. During that stop, Katara confronted him about his plans to take over the Bending Nations, which she overheard him talking about with Bumi. Reluctantly, and after a lot of nagging from Katara, Naruto explained to her his plan, how he was next in line for the Fire Nation throne by being engaged to Azula, how he was gathering support from people like Bumi for when he killed the Fire Lord, and what he planned to do if Aang tried to stop him. At first she was appalled by what he was planning but after talking it over and explaining things to her in detail she agreed with his plans and agreed to help him in any way she could, though she still wanted to get to know him before accepting the Sanbi, and by him she meant the real him and not the one Aang and Sokka knew, but the one Azula knew. Once Aang and Sokka had returned from the spirit world the group had traveled to the Crescent Island, where the Avatar Temple was located, where Aang talked to Roku while Naruto beat the shit out of Zhao, 
after putting Sokka and Zuko under a genjutsu. After Aang's talk with Roku, which ended with the Avatar Temple being destroyed, the group resumed their journey, with Naruto teaching both Aang and Katara what he knew about waterbending. They later ran into a group of kids calling themselves Freedom Fighters, though they were really just a bunch of street urchins. Their latest adventures had been crossing a rather large canyon with two warring tribes. Who by the end of the trip became one tribe after listening to Aang's lie, followed by Naruto and Katara learning about why Aang disappeared for a hundred years before going into a storm to rescue Sokka, who was out fishing with an old man as a side job in order to get some money, which lead to their location inside an old destroyed earth temple with Sokka having caught something that prevented him from traveling. Hey guys I'm back, Aang said as he returned getting a smile from Katara and a nod from Naruto. I couldn't find any ginger root but I found a map, there's an herbalist institute on top of that mountain. We could probably find a cure for Sokka there, he said unrolling the map he found and pointing towards the location. Naruto's eyes widened upon seeing the map, something that Katara caught. Aang, Sokka's in no condition for travel, he just needs more rest, I'm sure he'll be better by tomorrow, she said before giving a fake cough which Naruto caught but Aang apparently thought was real. Oh no, not you too, he began to panic while Naruto silently chuckled, this kid was really gullible at times, though he could see Katara's plea, i.e. demand, that he help get rid of Aang so they could talk. Don't worry Aang, I'm sure it's just a small cough, both turned to him with different expressions, Aang looked worried and Katara looked upset. But as my sensei always said, it's better to be prepared for anything, otherwise it'll stab you in the back, though I think he was talking about preparing for a fight, but the meaning's the same. Since you are technically faster than me, I'll stay here and keep an eye on them while you run and get them some medicine. All right, you keep an eye on them and I'll go get them some medicine, he grabbed his glider and prepared to take of before stopping as a giant storm cloud approached. That's why I said run instead of fly, there's a storm coming, nothing bad just rain and heavy winds if my senses are right, which would make it hard for you to fly, Naruto chuckled. Once Aang was gone Naruto put Sokka into a dreamless sleep with his Sharingan before turning to Katara, who was tapping her foot. So, are you going to tell me why you seemed so surprised when you saw the map of the area? Katara asked tapping her foot. Sigh the area we're currently in is the location of the Pohuai stronghold, the home of the Yuyan archers, a group of skilled archers that can pin a fly to a tree from over a hundred meters away without killing it, these guys are the best. Why does it sound like you know this from experience? She asked as he chuckled. Because, I trained with them for a year, in that year I learnt their ways and became one of their best archers, before I left, the Yuyan swore their loyalty to me, he chuckled a little nervously. Does this mean Aang's in danger? She asked looking in the direction he ran off to. No he should be fine, this just means we have somewhere to rest while this storm blows over, Naruto gathered their things and placed them on Appa before moving Sokka into the middle of his saddle. But what about Aang? She asked as Naruto helped her onto Appa's back, Momo climbing onto Naruto's shoulders. Don't worry, if my gut's right, that idiot Zhao will find some way to use the Yuyan to capture Aang alive. Appa soared out of the ruins and headed for the Pohuai stronghold. When he is, I'll use my Sharingan to place him in a Genjutsu where he was captured, escapes, and brings back the medicine for you too. Nodding at his plan, Katara moves over next to him and leans her head on his shoulder while he creates a sealless clone to watch over Sokka. So when am I going to meet Azula and the other girls? Katara asked after a few moments of silence, she had been curious as to when she would meet the other girls in Naruto's family. Soon, in fact, one of them is currently in charge of the Pohuai stronghold, he smirked as the winds began to die down, indicating that the storm was starting to calm down before hitting hard. Who? Katara asked trying to think of which of the girls in Naruto's family would be in charge of the place, she knew it wasn't Azula, she was the princess of the Fire Nation and while she could easily be in charge of the place, Katara doubted it would be her. Is it Tai Li? Naruto shook his head with a smirk. Nope, she joined the circus for fun, remember? Katara blushed and nodded at that, she had forgotten for a moment there. Tai Li was one of Naruto's lover's wives, she was also the Jinchuriki for the Gobi as well as an airbender. A week after he had been accepted by Ozai Naruto had discovered Tai Li as she secretly practiced airbending, when he confronted her she told him about her grandfather being an air nomad from the western air temple before he was banished for breaking one of their laws, she then begged him not to tell anyone which he agreed to if she helped him learn airbending, 
which she eagerly agreed to since her six sisters didn't like using their airbending. When Naruto and Azula had traveled to the elemental nations, Naruto had transferred the Gobi to her after beating its previous host, Han. Katara had met Tai Lee after one of her shows, Naruto had taken her to the circus for a date after she had confronted him about his plans. Is it Fu? Naruto shook his head with a smirk on his face. Fu was a jinchuriki that Naruto had taken from her village, which treated her like a monster. When they returned to the bending countries, Fu learned that, with the Nanabi inside her she could bend both earth and water, since those were her chakra natures. Does that mean it's Yugito? Katara asked getting a smirk from Naruto. Yugito was another jinchuriki that Naruto had taken from her village, he had snuck into Kumo and managed to steal a scroll on the Reikage's lightning armor and the black lightning. On his way out he found Yugito who was being trained as a weapon. Angered at that, Naruto had killed the men training her and taken her back to the bending nations with him, where they learned that thanks to Nibi and her fire and air affinities she could bend fire and air. It might be, Naruto smirked as the small grin on Katara's face. She loved meeting Tai Li and learning what it was like to be a Jinchuriki, and she was excited to meet the others. You know, after we meet up with Yugito, I may be ready to accept your offer in becoming the next Sanbi Jinchuriki, Naruto glanced at her with a raised eyebrow. I know it's only been about a month since we met, but in that time I feel that I've really gotten to know you, not just the mask you show Aang and Sokka, but the real you the one you only show to those precious to you, and in the time we've known each other, I've really come to love that side of you, with a sly grin she leaned up and kissed him on the lips. Though short, the second their lips met was like an explosion of emotion. Katara felt her heart skip as she slowly drew back, the wave of emotions she felt from Naruto in that single moment still playing through her head, love, joy, acceptance, a little bit of fear. Naruto himself was still blinking at the small kiss and the feeling it gave him, a feeling that only Azula, Tai Li, Yugito and Fu had ever brought on, the feeling of utmost love and devotion and the willingness to follow him through the gates of hell and back if need be. Wow, Naruto blinked before a small smile crossed his face and he swiped another kiss from her. Katara, I'm happy that you want to accept my offer but I want to ask you before we land, are you sure about this? He glanced at her as Appa landed in front of the Pohuai gates where a number of armed soldiers appeared and saluted. I'm sure, she smiled at him as he wrapped an arm around her waist and hopped off Appa. Welcome Lord Naruto, we've been expecting you, said Zhao as he walked forward with an air of confidence. Zhao was a tall man with grey hair and amber eyes. He was wearing a traditional Fire Nation uniform for commanders. Commander Zhao, I had a feeling you would be here, Naruto said with a blank face as he looked at the man. Actually it's Admiral now, Naruto raised an eyebrow. And I should care, why? Naruto internally smirked at the twitch Zhao gained before turning towards a random soldier. You, has the avatar been captured yet? Yes Lord Naruto, Lady Yugito is currently with him placing him under a genjutsu, the soldier said causing Naruto to smirk, great minds really do think alike. Good, now you see the animals behind me, they are to be taken well care of, along with the boy in the saddle, if any of them are hurt, Naruto's eyes began glowing blood red, the one who hurt them will not like the punishment, am I understood? Yes Lord Naruto, all of the soldiers yelled standing straighter, causing him to smirk. Good, now if anyone needs me I'll be in my private chambers, he said leading Katara away. Oh and in case anyone's wondering, if I'm disturbed for any reason, I will kill the person who disturbed me. Katara, I'm going to ask you one more time, are you sure you want to go through with this? Naruto asked an hour later as he stood in his private room, looking down at Katara, who was only wearing a pair of blue panties and a blue bra with a ceiling array on her stomach, Yugito was standing across from Naruto looking down at the girl who would become her newest sister. Yes, I'm ready, she said stealing the last of her resolve to take on the same curse and gift as the two standing over her. Before Naruto could move towards her a loud bell sounded causing both their eyes to glow in irritation at the fact that they were interrupted. After putting on a pair of pants and a shirt, both Jinchuriki left the room in anger as they headed towards the outer wall in order to find out what the problem was. What the fuck is so damned important that you fuckers had to sound every alarm in this damned place? Naruto yelled once they reached the outer wall where Zhao and the other men in charge of the fortress were shaking on their knees at the pressure the two were giving of. My apologies Lord Naruto, Lady Yugito, but we have a problem, 
an army of around 2,000 Earth Kingdom soldiers are headed straight for us, they'll be here within the hour, one of the men panted as he tried to breath under the combined killing intent of the two ticked of Jinchuriki. Good, that means we have something to vent our frustration out on, Yugito said as the two jumped of the wall, headed in the direction of the Earth Kingdom army while Red Chakra surrounded them. That night, every conscious person within the walls of the Pohuai stronghold, paled, their blood running cold as they listened to the sound of a slaughter right outside their doorstep, each one of them praying to any and every deity they could think of that they would never have to face the two blondes that were the cause of the sounds. Naruto let a small smirk cross his face as he sat on Appa's back, Katara leaning her head on his shoulder, as they neared the North Pole, they were finally there, he could feel it. After transferring Sanbi to Katara, which was very successful, followed by slaughtering around 2,000 Earth Kingdom soldiers, the group left the Pohuai stronghold, with Aang and Sokka being none the wiser. Their next stop had been in the small village of Makapu, where they met Aunt Wu, who was a fortune teller, and relatively skilled in the art. While in the village, Naruto created over a thousand shadow clones and set them the task of gaining both an earth and lightning affinity. Over the next month, Naruto continued to have his clones train in the last two affinities while he taught Katara about chakra, the first thing he taught her being the shadow clones which she used to help her chakra control. During their last stop, they meet a group of refugees who had taken refuge in the Northern Air Temple, while their Naruto managed to find a number of gliders like Aang's, which he took, one for himself and the rest for his girls, since Azula and Fu were had been learning wind manipulation, which would activate air bending for them, and he figured getting one for Katara would be good for later as well. Before they could leave the temple it was attacked by the Fire Nation, and since Naruto didn't really feel like revealing himself to Aang just yet, he sat back and watched as Aang and the rest defended the temple, which was a rather impressive feat in itself. Currently they were nearing the North Pole, he could sense all of the waterbenders following them as they flew low over the water. Finally, once I get the northern tribe behind me all that's left will be to take control of Ba Sing Sa and then kill Ozai, Naruto thought as he wrapped an arm around Katara, pulling her closer. Once that's done, I will rebuild the air nomads then march on Konoha, and destroy all who wronged me and my family. Before anything else could happen Naruto felt a tugging in the back of his mind, telling him that Kiyubi wanted to talk to him, closing his eyes, Naruto concentrated before opening his eyes to find himself standing in front of Kiyubi's cage, surprisingly Katara was standing next to him looking at another cage which contained Sanbi. Hey Kurama, you need something? Naruto asked looking up as a massive red eye appeared from within the cage. Naruto had defeated his darkness and Kiyubi a year after joining the front lines of the Fire Nation army, and had learned Kurama's name, though she didn't really think he needed her full power, aka a full release, just yet. Yes, Kit, I wanted to let you know, you are nearing two very powerful beings, beings that alone could rival me, but together would completely overwhelm me, she said as she appeared out of the darkness, Sanbi doing the same. The being Kurama speaks of are the moon and ocean spirits, both are dangerous in their own rights, however, they may be able to help you bring back the airbenders faster than you were planning, Sanbi said getting a curious look from the two Jinchuriki. What exactly do you mean Sanbi? I though you both said the only way for me to bring back the airbenders in a short amount of time would be to find a lion turtle and get it to teach me energy bending, Naruto said looking between the two. Yes that would be the fastest way, however the chances of a lion turtle actually doing that for you are slim, yet with two spirits outside of the spirit world, close to you, a new way has presented itself to you, Kurama said with a fox-like grin. What? Katara asked curiously. Naruto had told her about his plan to find a lion turtle, which were said to only be myths. Harmonic convergence, the two said getting wide eyes from the two. Normally a harmonic convergence happens once every 10,000 years, however, if you have two powerful spirits and two powerful medians, you can create a harmonic convergence of your own, Kurama said with a smirk. That could work, if we use our full chakra shrouds and act as the medians we could create a convergence and bring back the airbenders. Naruto said thinking of everything that could happen. But what about Ozai and Aang? The three looked at Katara. If we perform a harmonic convergence before you kill Ozai, he could interpret this as a plan to overthrow him, messing up your plans, and Aang might see this as you tampering with the balance, which he has been brought to believe he has to protect, it could trigger his avatar state and lead to a large-scale battle between him and us. Naruto sighed as he thought about that, she was right, Ozai was too paranoid for his own good 
especially when it came to him, and Ang, even though he was a kid he was still just that, an impressionable kid, who had the impression that he had to bring his own sense of balance to the world. You're right, they would be a problem, and I don't really feel like killing Ang, the kid's grown on me you know, Katara smiled at that, she could understand where he was coming from, she did see him as an annoying little brother, despite the crush he had on her. So what do you plan to do, Sanbi, or Isobu, asked looking at him curiously. Well we know that there are two spirits at the North Pole, all we have to do is wait until after we kill Ozai, once we do that we can come back and create a convergence in order to bring back the airbenders, Naruto said getting a nod from the three before he left his mindscape with Katara. Do you think we should have told them what would happen if they're in the bending countries during a harmonic convergence? Isobu asked looking at Kurama. No, why spoil the surprise? She said liking her lips at the thought of what would happen. Opening his eyes Naruto found that they had been surrounded by water benders and escorted to the northern tribe. As they sailed through the city Naruto caught the spotted a girl with long white hair and bright blue eyes. As their eyes meet a smirk crossed Naruto's lips. I think I just found the new Rokubi, Naruto whispered to Katara who glanced back at the girl. She is pretty cute, but wouldn't you need to go back and capture the Rokubi? Katara whispered back. No, before we returned to the bending countries I managed to capture the Rokubi Jinchuriki, I placed him in a special storage scroll that I have sealed on my arm, he smirked as he remembered the fight he had with Yudakata, it did a lot of damage to Kiri, though Mei didn't seem to upset by the destruction. All right, but how are you going to convince her? She inwardly sighed at the fox like grin that appeared on his face. You leave that to me, with that he hopped of Appa and vanished into the city, following the girl. An hour later, Naruto stood on top of a building looking down at the girl. She had just left the person transporting her around town and was standing on a bridge, looking out over the city. It's beautiful, isn't it? The city is so peaceful and calming she said getting a raised eyebrow from Naruto as he jumped to the roof and landed next to her without a sound. I suppose, he said looking over the city, by the way how did you know I was there? I'm not really sure, but after I saw you earlier I had a weird feeling that you were here for a reason, she smiled at him. By the way my name's you may I ask yours? My name's Naruto Uzumaki, it's nice to meet you, he smiled taking her hand and kissing the back of it, causing her face to heat up. Naruto Uzumaki, that's an interesting name, what does it mean? Naruto grinned, people never really asked him what his name meant, it was actually rather nice. Naruto means maelstrom and Uzumaki mean whirlpool, he said getting a small smile from her. Maelstrom whirlpool, two things that come from the ocean, and now you're in the northern water tribe, where benders live in harmony with the ocean, she chuckled at the idea, and he could see why, his name was something that connected him to the ocean like her and her people. So, may I ask why you were following me? She looked him dead in the eye, hoping to intimidate him, only to light up like a flame before looking away. I'm sorry it wasn't my intention really, but when I saw you back there I sensed something, and I couldn't really put my figure on what it was, so I figure that if I followed you I might be able to figure it out, he said honestly, he could feel something from her, he just couldn't figure out what it was, it felt similar to Aang though. I don't know how, but you might be feeling the power of the moon spirit, Naruto glanced at her curiously, now that he thought about it that would make some sense as to why she felt a little like Aang, and if he concentrated hard enough he could sense the same feeling coming from a location deeper in the city. That could be it, since I can feel a stronger source coming from deeper inside the village, he said looking back over the village before turning around to see a man black hair and blue eyes similar to Yu's, standing next to Katara, who was eyeing Yu. Hey Katara, I see you found us mind telling me who the old guy next to you is? This is Chief Arnuk, as well as Yu's father, Katara said shaking her head, Naruto really had no respect for people, whether he was wearing his mask or not, probably an Uzumaki thing. So you're the leader of the Northern Water Tribe, nice to meet you, Naruto said appearing next to the man, who blinked and looked at him curiously. It is nice to finally meet you as well Naruto, both Katara and Yu blinked at the fact that Arnuk know him. I have been expecting you to visit, though I never thought you would arrive with the avatar, considering your plan. Yeah well, things change, Naruto shrugged before turning serious, we need to talk, in privet, and I would like your daughter to be there as well. May I ask why? Arnuk tensed at hearing Naruto request for his daughter to attend a meeting of such importance, while Naruto gained a fox-like smirk. That night, 
After the meeting with Arnuk and Yu, Naruto and Katara were sitting at in a banquet hall with Aang and Sokka, enjoying the food that had been prepared, seeing as the water tribe was celebrating Yu's 16th birthday, which signified her to be of marrying age, as well as the arrival of Aang. So do you think that Arnuk will accept you proposal? Katara asked as they watched the tribe's waterbending master preform with some of his students. I'm sure you will, he's heard of my powers, and he's heard of the powers of the Jinchuriki, remember the slaughter at the Pohuai stronghold, I'm pretty sure that word of over 2,000 men dying at the hands of only two people would have reached the ears of the leaders of every nation, he said glancing over at Yu, who was avoiding eye contact with him, as well as trying to ignore Sokka. With that knowledge in mind, and the knowledge that two Jinchuriki are in his village right now, I doubt he's willing to refuse and anger us, knowing we could destroy the entire village if we needed to. And what of you, do you think she will accept your offer? Katara eyed the girl with a small smirk, even though she loved Naruto, she had to admit the girl was very beautiful and she would love to get her into the same bed. Yes, despite the fact she hides it rather well, I can see the want for power in her eyes, it wants for power to protect her home her family and everything she considers precious to her, he said also glancing at the girl, shaking his head as Sokka tried to flirt with her. The same qualities that you have, Naruto nodded at that, they were the qualities that he looked for in people, he had them, Azula, Tai Li, Yugito, Fu, and even Katara had them, they were qualities that the Uzumaki clan prided themselves on. Yeah, they are, Katara chuckled and shook her head as Naruto continued to eat, though she had to admit the food was good, but she wondered what Yu tasted like. The next day, as the sun rose over the horizon, Naruto and Katara followed Aang as they headed to talk towards the location the waterbending master, Paku would teach them waterbending. Master Paku, we're here, Aang yelled distracting the old man from his morning practice. Well this won't end well, Naruto muttered as Paku observed them before dismissing Katara, saying that he wouldn't train her because she was a girl. So what, you won't train me just because I'm a girl, Katara yelled, her eyes starting to glow a dull yellow, signaling that she was tapping into Isobu's power. Katara, calm down, Naruto placed a hand on her shoulder, causing her to glare at him. Sai look, I know the old man is stupid eh, for refusing to teach you, especially since you could level this entire village without water bending, Paku and Aang's eyes widened at that. But you have to keep cool, remember, I'm going to be learning from him too so I can teach you anything he teaches me at a later time. And how will you teach her if I refuse to teach you? A chill ran down his spin at the evil smirk Naruto gained at that. Oh, you're going to teach me. Naruto vanished and reappeared behind Paku with a kanai at his throat. Because if you don't I'll kill you where you stand. Why don't we just have him teach me on that threat? Katara asked, mentally smacking herself for not thinking of that sooner. That could work, Naruto said shrugging his shoulders. Very well, I'll do it, Paku said as a line of blood appeared on his neck. Good, then let's begin. Naruto reappeared next to Katara as they both took on the basic stance along with Aang, who was happy his friends would be learning with him. That night after everyone had turned in, both Naruto and Katara stood in a private room, across from them were Arnuk and Yu. Arnuk looked a little hesitant while Yu looked eager. So have you decided on an answer? Naruto asked guessing that was why they were called. Sai yes we have, Arnuk looked like he was going against his better judgment, after hours of discussion with you, I have decided to accept your offer, and join you when you bring the bending nations under one rule, Naruto nodded at this before looking over at you. Despite my father's reluctance on this issue I fully support the idea of uniting all of the nations, and would be honored to become a member of your family. Yu said bowing before Naruto grabbed her hand and pulled her to her feet. Then you should know, Uzumaki bowed to no one, he looked into her eyes causing her cheeks to heat up. Besides, a beautiful girl like you shouldn't have to ever lower her head to anyone, he leaned in and gently captured her lips, which she eagerly and hungrily returned, causing Arnuk's eyes to widen in surprise while Katara licked her lips in anticipation. Now, shall we perform the sealing? Nodding her head in agreement, Yu and Katara followed Naruto out into the frozen tundra where you would perform the sealing of Rokubi, so as not to alert anyone, least of all Aang. Naruto let out a small sigh as he stood on the wall separating the spirit oasis from the rest of the village, watching as the Fire Nation army attacked the North Pole, with Zhao leading the army. It had been a month since the group had arrived at the North Pole and Naruto had transferred Saiken from Utakata to Yu, 
And in that month everything had been going so well, until the day it stared snowing soot, indicating the Fire Nation was coming. Damn, I knew I should have killed him when I first met that bastard, especially after what Jung Jung said about him, Naruto thought turning away from the battle towards the oasis, where Aang was meditating, having entered the spirit world. This is messing up my entire plan. You know, you could always just take command of the army and leave, Kurama said from inside the seal causing Naruto to sigh. She was right, he could just take command of the army, but that would mean leaving Katara and the two idiots, which he hadn't planned to do quit this early. Sigh I know, but I didn't want to have to alter my plans so much, so quickly, Naruto thought as he watched from his spot as Zuko took Aang's body out into a blizzard while Katara, Yu and Sokka followed. Naruto, you know that even the best laid plans have problems that force the one who made them to alter them at a moment's notice, Naruto sighed, he knew she was right, but he didn't want to admit it just yet. Besides, changing your plan a little like this will allow you to focus on finding someone to become the holder for Gyuki, seeing as he's the only one you haven't transferred to a new host from their current one. Naruto let out a long sigh at that, she was right of course, during the trip to the elemental nations, after transferring Sun and Kakuo to Azula and Tai Li, Naruto had captured the rest of the Jinchuriki, Gara, Yutakata and B. He had transferred Ichibi, who was inside Gara into a blind girl he had met named Toph. While she wasn't one of his lovers like the others he had adopted her as a sister, while giving her Shukaku to help her see by transplanting a pair of Sharingan into her, though she remained blind when the Sharingan wasn't activated, which confused him a little. With Toph holding the Shukaku and waiting for his next instructions, and the transfer of Saiken from Yutakata to Yu, that left only the Gyuki and his host B, who was currently locked up in a special cell in the Burning Rock prison. The cell was crafted with a number of different seals, many of which were also placed on B, that prevented him from accessing chakra, his and Gyuki's, as well as preventing him from learning to bend. Well I do need to find someone to take his place, I mean B's cool and all but he's a real hard ass when it comes to convincing him to join me, Naruto chuckled at the memory of his last meeting with B, the man was entertaining with his rapping, but he refused to join Naruto and help him take control of the bending nations before moving towards the elemental nations. What about that one girl, Jun I believe her name was, the one that tracked Katara by the scent of her necklace, she seemed strong, or that girl from Kyoshi, Suki I believe, she seemed like she would make a strong mate, Naruto shook his head, both of them were strong in their own rights but he needed someone else. No I need someone else, someone I know can handle this without any problem, I need an Uzumaki, Kiyubi fell silent at that, she knew of only two Uzumaki, and she knew of a way to retrieve one of them but she wasn't sure Naruto would like it. Sai sorry kit, I only know of two Uzumaki, Mito Uzumaki and your mother, Kashina Uzumaki, both were my containers before you and both are dead, Naruto let out a teared sigh at that, he should have known it wouldn't be as simple as asking Kurama. Though I do know of a way to bring one of them back to life, and I mean actual life, not just the fake life of the Edo Tensai, Naruto shuddered at the mention of the Jutsu, while it wasn't Uzumaki made, the Uzumaki still had a scroll on how to use and preform it. How? Naruto was curious at this prospect, if there was any way to revive his mom, he would take it in a heartbeat, if only to meet her. You would have to enter the spirit world, once there, you would have to find Shinigami, the goddess of death, and make a deal with her, if she agrees then your mom should be brought back, Kurama said getting wide eyes from Naruto, before he narrowed them, there had to be some kind of catch, it couldn't be that simple. So what's the catch? There has to be something that I have to do before I can go to the spirit world. Naruto narrowed his eyes, things were never that simple. There is actually a way to summon her, remember the reaper's mask you found in the Uzumaki scrolls? That mask is the fastest way to summon her, though in order to get it you have to return to the fire nation in order to get the mask, since you left it there, again Naruto sighed, he knew it wasn't going to be easy. Fine, I'll do it, right after I kill Zhao. Naruto said watching as Zhao killed the moon spirit Tui, before running. As Naruto was about to leave to kill the man, he stopped as he watched Aang and the ocean spirit Le become a giant water monster. After Aang and Le left the oasis, Naruto watched as Yu used the power Tui had given her to revive the moon spirit, which caused Aang and Le to stop their rampage, but not before they destroyed over a hundred Fire Nation ships. Well, I guess this is as good of time to leave as any, and just to make sure Aang follows his role, I'll, kidnap, Katara and you. I mean aside from the chief no one knows about our arrangement, so I can get Aang to follow my orders with this, 
since he still has a crush on Katara, and Sokka has one on you, as the Fire Nation fleet began to retreat and Aang rejoined the group plus Iroh. Naruto sprang into action, appearing behind Katara and you and knocking them out. Well now, this is a nice little reunion, wouldn't you say Iroh? Naruto asked as the two girls fell into the arms of two shadow clones, which took them both away. Naruto, what are you doing? Aang asked in shock as Naruto smirked. Oh come on Aang, isn't it obvious, I'm leaving your little group and taking both Katara and you as motivators, Naruto chuckled at the confused look on the faces of Aang and Sokka. So this is where you have been, traveling with the Avatar, now I understand why he wasn't captured before now, Iroh said stepping forward. So what is your plan now Naruto, or should I call you Prince Naruto? Aang and Sokka looked confused at this while Zuko, who arrived back at the oasis had a look of shock and fury on his face. Naruto is fine old man, especially since Ozai hasn't named me as Fire Lord yet, the two teens eyes widened in shock at these words. You're part of the Fire Nation? Sokka yelled pulling out his boomerang while Aang slid into an airbender stance. Sure am, allow me to introduce myself properly, a cloud of smoke covered Naruto before vanishing, to reveal him standing there wearing a Fire Nation uniform. I am Naruto Uzumaki, the next ruler of the Fire Nation, unless little Zuzu here manages to redeem himself before I marry his sister Azula, he smirked as steam poured out of Zuko's head, indicating that he was mad. So you've been lying to us all along? Aang asked in shock, he had actually grown to like Naruto, despite the fact he was so close to Katara. In a sense yes and no, I have lied about a lot of things but I've also told you the truth about a lot of things, but since my rides are leaving now, I'm going to head out too. He turned and smirked at Zuko before looking over his shoulder. Also, if you're wondering why I took Katara and you, it's to act as an incentive, if you want to see either of them again master earth bending, then come find me, I'll be waiting, with that said Naruto began bending fire, water, and air around him, creating a small cyclone out of the three elements, before vanishing leaving two confused teens while Iroh and Zuko left. Aboard one of the Fire Nation ships that were in full retreat, all of the guards appeared on the deck of the ship and stood at attention as a giant vortex appeared on the deck. Welcome Lord Naruto, we've been expecting you, a man, presumably the captain, said once the vortex died down to reveal Naruto, Katara and you. Lady Fu is waiting for you inside her room, would you like me to escort you there? No we can find her ourselves, just set a course for the Fire Nation, double time, I want to be there as soon as possible. The captain bowed as Naruto and the two girls headed for one of the rooms where they found another girl waiting for them. The girl had short lime green hair and bright orange eyes, she had dark skin, similar to Katara's and was wearing a Fire Nation uniform that was only worn by high members of the military, similar to Naruto's. Welcome back Naruto, I've been expecting you, she said walking over and pulling him into a deep kiss as you closed the door behind them. It's good to be back Fu, it's been a while. Naruto smiled at her as they broke the kiss, before she turned her eyes onto the two waterbenders. So I take it these two or the new Jinchuriki Yugito told me you were planning to bring home? He nodded as Fu circled the two, looking them up and down with a critical eye. Um both are strong, though not too muscular, I'm guessing both are pretty flexible, both girls blushed at that while Naruto chuckled, he knew she meant on the battlefield as well as the bed, but it was funny watching their minds jump straight to the bed. They'll fit in just fine with the rest of use, and I definitely can't wait to get them both into bed. Fu licked her lips hungrily as she eyed them both with a look that told both waterbenders that they would be doing a lot of screaming. Well while you enjoy them I'm going to be giving out a few orders to the captains of all of the remaining ships, with that he left the two waterbenders to their fate. Lord Naruto sire, welcome, the captain of the ship bowed as Naruto entered the control room of the ship. Captain, I need two of your fastest messenger hawks. I need to send a message, once that's done, if you haven't already, I need you to tell all other ships to head for the Fire Nation, once there you will all receive new orders, the captain bowed and left to get Naruto a pair of messenger hawks which he sent to Yugito and Tai Li, with instructions to return to the Fire Nation. Um, can't don't you just love the smell of the sea in the morning? Naruto asked standing on the deck of the ship with Fu as the ship they were on pulled into the port of the Fire Nation. Yeah but I think I prefer to be on dry land rather than out at sea, though I did enjoy myself during the trip back. Naruto chuckled at Fu's words as he glanced over at Katara and Yu, both of whom were limping, with blissful looks on their faces and glazed eyes. 
Yes, but did you have to break them? Fu gave him a deadpan stare as they lead the two waterbenders of the ship, towards the royal guards and a large crowd of people cheering for Naruto and Fu. You're a real bastard for blaming their current state on me, when you spent the last three days fucking all three of us. Fu snapped earning a chuckle from the male Jinchuriki as they were escorted to the palace where they were met by Azula, Tai Li, and Yugito. Welcome back Naruto, we've been waiting for you, Azula said as the once the gates to the palace closed, separating the seven Jinchuriki from the rest of the Fire Nation. It's good to be back Azula, I've missed you, he pulled the Fire Nation princess into a deep kiss, which she eagerly returned. Well, now that all of us are here, what do we do now? Tai Li asked as Naruto and Azula broke apart, before she stole a kiss herself. Simple, for the next few months we train, hard, then when the time comes we take down Ba Sing Se, nothing more nothing less, getting a nod from all of them Naruto began walking towards the location he knew Ozai was, his throne room. Are you going to talk to father about what happened at the North Pole? Azula asked as the six girls followed behind him. Yes, though I'm guessing he already knows something about what happened, as they neared the throne room they saw four guards on either side of the door. Lord Naruto, Fire Lord Ozai has been expecting you, one of the guards said getting a nod from Naruto. Right, Tai Li, you and Yugito show Katara and you around, help them familiarize themselves with the palace, me, Azula and Fu can handle this, the four Jinchuriki nodded before leaving, allowing Naruto Azula and Fu to enter the throne room. Fire Lord Ozai, I have returned to give you my report on the state of the Avatar, and a detailed version of what happened at the North Pole, Naruto said bowing once they had entered the room, before looking up at the man that had given him his position of power, and the man he had sworn to kill, Fire Lord Ozai. Naruto narrowed his eyes in annoyance as he watched Ozai as he appeared to think over everything Naruto had told him. It had been over an hour since Naruto had entered the throne room with Azula and Fu, and in that time Naruto had given the king his full report telling him about his time with Aang and giving him a full account as to what happened at the North Pole. I see, so you allowed the Avatar to go and urged him to learn earth bending by taking the girl he has a crush on, Ozai said after a few minutes as Naruto nodded his head. I trust you have a plan? Of course I do, he needs an earth bending teacher meaning he will go to the earth kingdom, I already have someone there who will be on the lookout for him, they will train him and keep an eye on his progress while we devise a plan of our own for getting into Ba Sing Se. Once he has learned earth bending he will make his way to the earth kingdom which is where I will capture him, Naruto smirked at the pleased look on Ozai's face, he had no clue what Naruto was planning. Very well, then I shall leave it to you, just make sure not to fail, Naruto nodded his head before the three Jinchuriki left to find the others. So what do we do now? Azula asked as they traveled down the hall towards the others. Simple, as I said before, we train to become stronger. He reached into his pocket and pulled out a scroll which he tossed to Azula. You should read that, you may find it interesting. Curious, Azula opened the scroll and began to read what was written. Naruto, I hope you're well, and I'm sorry I haven't written in a while but things have become even more hectic since your last trip here and your capture of the other eight biju. As you know from my last few reports Konoha has dropped significantly in power since the day you were banished with the academy standards dropping to allow anyone to pass with three simple jutsu that anyone could do, because of this the survival rate of the newer genin is dropping, about one out of every new batch of teams survives their first year as shinobi. Because of this, other villages, namely Kiri, are starting to become more powerful to the point that all five of the great villages are on even footing, with all of the jinchuriki gone, though I'm assuming that Lady Mei and Itachi have already informed you of this. The main reason for my late report is as I said, your capture of the other eight Jinchuriki. The Rakage is in a furry and has pinned the blame on Konoha, since you were originally from the village, because of this, Konoha is on the verge of war with Iwa, Kumo and Suna, because of your actions, with Kiri and the smaller villages trying to stay out of it, however, thanks to Jiraiya and his spy network, Konoha has managed to put of war with the other nations by offering up any and all knowledge on you, including the fact that you are the son of the fourth Hokage. Because of this all five of the main villages have put together a task force of shinobi from each village to track you down. From Konoha there are Kakashi Hitaki, Might Guy, Kuranai Yuhi, Serutobi Isuma, and myself. From Kiri they are sending Ao, Zabuza Momochi, Amayuri Ringo, and Chojuro. From Suna they are sending Baki, Satetsu, Yura, and Pakura. 
From Iwa they are sending Kitsuchi, Gari, Suzumbaki, and Kuritsuchi, and from Kumo they are sending Darui, C, Atsui and Samui. Lord Jiraiya has already determined you location in the bending countries and we are currently on our way there, I don't know about the others but I have been come to a decision that once we arrive in the bending countries I will be joining you, and I know that the team from Kiri all have orders from Mei to be under your command, until you have taken control of the bending countries. I don't know when I will be able to break away with so many other Jonin around me or when I will be able to send more information but I will do what I can to keep you informed of our progress until I join up with you, signed your older sister, the hot and sexy Anko Midarashi. I see so is this why you're moving your plans up so fast? Azula asked after reading the letter a few more times. Partly, the other part is that while at the North Pole, Kurama told me two very interesting pieces of information. The two girls raised an eyebrow wondering what this information could be. The first bit of information I gained was a way to bring the air nomads back in very little time, both blinked at that, if there was a way to bring the air nomads back it would save them a lot of time. The second bit of info is how to bring my mom back. You're serious, there's actually a way to bring her back? Fu asked in amazement, she had heard stories of the legendary Kashina Uzumaki one of the only kunoichi to receive an S-rank flea on sight order in the bingo books. Yeah and I plan to bring her back tonight, after that I think we should head to the Earth Nation to begin training, Naruto said as they reached his room, entering it and closing the door behind them before stopping at the site before them. That night as the moon hung high in the sky, seven figures stood in the moonlight on top of the Fire Nation Imperial Palace. With a nod of the head from one of them, the seven figures blurred out of sight, running across the roofs of the city before running across the ocean towards Roku's island, the home of the previous avatar. So are you girls ready for this? asked Naruto as the seven Jinchuriki arrived on the island that once housed the avatar, and would also be his grave. Of course we're ready, I can't wait to meet your mother, Katara smiled, eager to meet Naruto's mother. Katara's right, let's get this over with so we can get home, Azula said with a small smirk, while she was eager to meet Naruto's mother, like most firebenders she was more active while the sun was up, rather than the moon. All right then stand back, as all of them backed up to give him some space, Naruto placed a demonic looking mask on his face, before flying through the hand signs Kiyubi instructed him to perform. Spirit Art Death Summoning Jutsu, Naruto slammed his hands onto the ground creating a large summoning seal, which was soon covered in deep purple smoke, which slowly began to vanish. Who dares summon me? The seven Jinchuriki stared in awe as the smoke cleared to reveal a tall woman with flowing white hair, deep purple eyes, and a white kimono that hugged her figure leaving little to the imagination. The only thing that told the Jinchuriki she was the Shinigami was the fact that the mask had flown off of Naruto and landed on her head, before morphing into a horned crown. Lady Shinigami, my name is Naruto Uzumaki and I have a request, the Shinigami raised an eyebrow curiously at this. She had been waiting for him to summon her, she knew all about his planes, she was just waiting to see what he would offer up as a deal. I'm listening, she said, she had been watching him since the day she had been summoned to seal Kurama into him. She had seen him struggle and fight to survive, she had watched as he schemed, lied, cheated and followed the way of the shinobi of old to get to where he was currently, standing in front of her preparing to offer her something for the soul of his mother. In exchange for you bringing my mother back to life, I will do anything you ask and pay any price, and if I have to give you my life in exchange, all I ask is that you release Kurama and make her whole again." All of the girls gained wide eyes at this new while Kurama was yelling at him from inside the seal. Shinigami raised an elegant eyebrow, that was not something she had expected, of course, he wasn't considered the most unpredictable person for nothing, though she had a better plan, especially since they would be joining her soon enough as spirits. You are willing to pay any price I so desire? Naruto nodded with a determined look in his eye. Very well, I will take you up on that, I will not be taking your life, however I do have a number of people that I need killed for different reasons, I will bring your mother back if you agree to kill these people for me. Naruto let out a breath he didn't realize he was holding, for a second there he thought she was going to take his life. Who exactly are these people? Naruto asked, the sooner he knew the sooner he could kill them and pay of his debt to the goddess of death. The first is someone you already plan to kill, Fire Lord Ozai, another would be Danzo, one of the elders on the Konoha Council, Hidan the Jashinists and Kakuzu the Heartstealer are two more, they are a part of Akatsuki so they will be coming for you soon enough, and finally the man who ripped Kurama from your mother and lead to your current life, 
Obito Uchiha, or as he calls himself, Tobi, he is the current mastermind behind the Akatsuki. If you agree to kill these five men I will return your mother to you, Naruto smirked, he had already planned to kill three of those people anyways, adding Hidan and Kakuzu was just a little more work on his part, but totally worth it in his opinion. Alright I accept your terms, the Shinigami smiled as her eyes glowed, before a portal appeared in front of her. Out of the portal fell a girl about their age fell out of the portal right into Naruto's arms. She had long blood red hair, she was wearing a short sleeved, tan kimono like blouse with a dark embroidered border, held closed with a black obi, a dark skirt and stockings that stopped at her thighs. This is your mother, Kashina Uzumaki, I have reduced her back to her teen years in order to be with you, however she has all of her memories up until the moment she died, Shinigami said with a small smirk. And as a secondary gift, I shall return something to her, she pulled out a black swirling ball before placing it inside Kashina. I have returned to her Kurama's yin half, making her a jinchuriki again, if that is all I shall take my leave, oh and Naruto, don't keep me waiting, with a smirk she leaned down and kissed Naruto before fading into nothingness, leaving a stunned gathering of jinchuriki. Naruto let out a long sigh as he sat on the deck of a large Fire Nation ship which was currently headed for the Earth Kingdom. Next to him were Katara and Tai Li, both of whom were watching as Azula showed Kashina how to lightning bend. Remember Kashina, let your chakra flow through you, breath in, mold the chakra into bending energy then release it through your fingertip, Azula instructed as she flowed through the motions with the newly revived Kashina. It had been nearly a month since Naruto had made his deal with the Shinigami, and in that time things had gone rather well, after his mother had been revived, all of the other Jinchuriki chewed him out for offering his life in exchange for his mother. Once the girls were done chewing him out, they explained everything to Kashina, who had woken up while the girl were laying into Naruto. They told her about Naruto's life in Konoha and banishment, how he traveled the elemental nations for a while before arriving in the bending nations, how he saved Ozai and his family and became the next in line for the throne, his plane to kill Ozai and unite the bending nations under one flag before destroying Konoha and how he had summoned the Shinigami to revive her, which ended up with her laying into him as well. Over the following week after Kashina's revival, Naruto and the other Jinchuriki spent their time together training Kashina, helping her get back up to her old strength as a shinobi as well as teach her the bending arts. Once the week was up, Ozai had decided to send them all out on a mission, which led to their current place on the Fire Nation ship. The eight Jinchuriki had been tasked with tracking down and capturing Zuko and Iroh before trying to take Ba Sing Se. You know, this bending is a lot harder than it looks, Kashina chuckled a little after finally firing three bolts of lightning in a row. Yeah, but at least you're able to summon hundreds of clones to help you learn faster, Katara said as everyone glanced over to the other side of the ship where over a hundred Kashinas were working, some on chakra control, some on water bending, and others on fire bending. Me? Azula and Tai Li had to learn on our own without the help of over a hundred copies of ourselves learning for us. Let it go Katara, there's nothing you can really do about it now, Katara let out a small sigh knowing Naruto was right. By the way, where are we going? I mean I know we're supposed to track down Azula's brother and uncle but do we even have any leads? Kashina asked as she and Azula sat down with the three watching them train. We're going to a small harbor town where we're going to meet Itachi and Kisame who are my spies within the Akatsuki, we are also meeting Tsunade, her apprentice Shizune and Makoto there as well, Naruto smirked as Kashina's eyes widened at the thought of seeing Makoto again. But I thought you said Itachi killed all of the other Uchiha aside from his brother Sasuke, Kashina said a little confused since the Uchiha massacre was the reason Naruto was banished. That's what I thought at first too, but while I was traveling the elemental nations, I ran into Granny Tsunade and learnt that she was watching over Mrs. Makoto, who was attacked by Fugaku before Itachi killed him, Naruto smiled as he remembered his own shock at learning that Makoto, one of the few people to help him in that hell hole, was still alive after he had been accused of killing her. So why are we going to see these people? Tai Li asked curiously as Fu, Yugito and Yu joined them on the deck. Well Makoto's injury from the night of the massacre was fatal, and Tsunade's been doing everything she can to help her but the treatment for the wound isn't working anymore, and if something's not done soon, Makoto will die, the Jinchuriki fell silent at that. But then I got to talking with Kurama about it, and she said a biju should be able to heal Makoto's wound with ease, and I still have B and Gyuki locked up, and she said we need to find a new host for Gyuki soon, 
So I was thinking of transferring him to Makoto and making her the new Hachibi Jinchuriki. So we're going to meet all of them in this harbor town? Fu asked looking at him curiously. Actually, we're splitting up, I have assignments that I need you to complete, Naruto pulled out a three scrolls. Yugito, I need you and you to head to Wan Shi Tong's library, I want you to gather what you can on harmonic convergences, I want to perform this thing soon, the two nodded their heads before vanishing in a swirl of wind. Fu, I want you and Tai Li to head to Ba Sing Se, infiltrate the city and prepare for our arrival, the two nodded before vanishing in twin bolts of lightning. What about the rest of us Naruto? Katara asked with a raised eyebrow wondering what he was going to have them do. You and Azula are going to be tracking the avatar, keep following him but let them escape, and every time you meet, I need you to act like you're being controlled. Naruto looked at Katara who smirked before the two left in a swirl of fire and water. As for us, we're going to meet Itachi and Kisame in the harbor town before heading to Omashu to meet Tsunade and Makoto. Kashina nodded her head excitedly, happy at the prospect of seeing her best friend once again. Azula and Katara Azula let out a tired sigh as she stood before a small battalion of tanks that were headed for Omashu, massaging the bridge of her nose to try and ease the growing headache she had. So let me get this straight, you men tracked the avatar to this tunnel and instead of securing it you decide to close the mouth and trap them inside? Azula asked in irritation as the men standing in front of her shivered in fear. Please forgive us Princess Azula, the men said as the dropped to their knees and bowed. You know this could actually be a good thing, Katara said looking at the mountain with a calculating gaze, getting a raised eyebrow from Azula. It had been a few hours since the two had begun tracking Aang and Sokka and in that time the two had come up with a number of plans to capture, the avatar, giving him plenty of openings to escape in each plan. How, he's trapped in a mountain labyrinth, Azula said looking at the waterbender with a raised eyebrow. During their time together the two had learned a lot about each other, Katara learned that Azula had a true shinobi mindset when it came to war, but when she wasn't fighting she enjoyed tea and a good book. Azula learned that while Katara enjoyed swimming when she wasn't fighting, she actually had a calculating and keen mind which allowed her to see things others would normally overlook. Exactly, look, we know he's headed for Omashu to find an earth-bending teacher, what he doesn't know is that we already have control over Omashu, with him trapped in that cave, since he's a stubborn little idiot that will get out, it will give us time to get to Omashu and come up with a plan to capture him. Azula starred at her fellow Jinchuriki in shock before lightly chuckling in amusement. You know, you really are evil, the two chuckled at that before heading off towards Omashu to wait. Fu and Tai Li. Can I please destroy this place? Tai Li let out a small sigh at Fu's request to destroy the ticket stand that was hidden in Full Moon Bay, or more specifically her desire to kill the ugly old ticket handler. Sigh, no Fu, you can't destroy this place yet, Naruto would be made if you did. Fu twitched knowing that Naruto would beat her ass if she did something stupid, before she began drooling at the thought of Naruto smacking her ass. You're drooling again. Tai Li said handing Fu a cloth to wipe the drool of her mouth. Sorry, I can't help it, just thinking of Naruto punishing me makes me, she trailed of as she began to drool again, causing Tai Li to sigh. Sigh I know, but just think, if our mission is successful, he can punish you all you want, Fu began giggling perversely at that at ideas of what she was going to have him do flooded her mind. With another long sigh at her sister's behavior Tai Li dragged Fu towards the boat which would take them straight to Ba Sing Se. Yugito and Yu within the vast Si Wang desert where the Wan Shi Tong library was hidden, two blurs raced over sand dunes at inhuman speeds. So Yugito, have you ever been to this library place we're supposed to be going? Yu asked getting a smirk from the Nibi Jinchuriki. Yeah, I went there with Naruto and a friend of ours, she smirked thinking of the person they had left at the library. You left someone here? Yu asked as they stopped outside a giant tower sticking out of the sand. Yeah, though to be honest, he chose to stay out here, he prefers living in the desert it reminds him of home. The two climbed the tower, entering through a window before dropping into a massive library. So I see you both finally made it. Yu let out a small shirk as the two turned to face the person that had spoken. It took you long enough, he said with a bored look on his face. The speaker was a boy of about 15 with short, spiky red hair and light green eyes with the kanji for love tattooed on his forehead. He was wearing a pair of brown pants and a brown shirt with a large gourd strapped to his back. 
It's good to see you again as well Gara. how've you been since Naruto fixed you seal? Yugito asked the youngest of the Jinchuriki with a smile. Fine, Shukaku has been rather quiet since Naruto took her yin half and sealed it into that tough girl, which has given me the chance to sleep more, he said with a small smile as a throne made of sand rose up behind him. Yugito, who is this? Yu asked looking at Gara in shock. Yu, this is Gara no Sabaku the Jinchuriki of the Ichibi no Tanuki the one-tailed raccoon dog. Yugito smirked at the confused look on Yu's face. But I thought that Toph girl was the Jinchuriki of the Ichibi, Yu said looking at Gara, who had a small smirk. She is, we're both the Jinchuriki, of a single biju, like Naruto, I hold the young half of Shukaku while Toph holds the yin. This way, Toph can be a Jinchuriki without me having to die, Gara explained. Basically, when we found Gara, he reminded Naruto of himself, so when he made Toph the new Ichibi Jinchuriki, he only transferred half of Shukaku to Toph, making her a Jinchuriki and allowing Gara to continue living. Yugito explained getting wide eyes from you. Yes well as fun as this is, I know Naruto didn't send you here without a reason, so tell me, what does he need? Yugito smirked at Gara's straight to the point attitude. We need all the info you have on harmonic convergences. At those words a small smirk made its way to Gara's as he chuckled before leading the two deeper into the library, both wondering what they would find. The end. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Remember to subscribe and like this video. See you in the next part.